uh, Senator John McCain, uh, the great Phil Jackson, uh, Shaquille O'Neal, of course, Dennis Rodman many, many times, so many great comics. Jay really, you know, because, you know, he inherited that huge mantle of Carson and the, you know, the comics dream of, of being, uh, you know, brought over the finger waving to come over and sit next to Johnny. But Jay was even more generous and, uh, and helped so many people, you know, maybe not just comics. Uh, maybe tell us a little about that, too, because, you know, that's throughout this book as well. About Jay, Jay helping out uh, comedians and others? On, so many people, um, yeah, I mentioned, too, he helped, and he'd help people that were competing, like Chelsea Handler. How many yeah. times did he have yeah. her on there? And uh, he really helped her get, you know, her audience, which, you know, it's a shame now, like Arsenio, she's gone. She went out on her own kicking and screaming terms. Arsenio, when he, CBA, or, uh, his uh, syndicator announced that he was coming back, he, great surprise! He had Jay announce that, and then, uh, you know, sadly that uh, that didn't continue, which is a shame because you look at the Seinfeld thing. NBC, at least, must be given credit is really one of the first networks to allow a show to gel, take its proper shape finally, because it takes a long time to do that, gain traction in an audience, and um, you know that was needed for Arsenio's show. But uh, you know, kudos to NBC at least on that. Yeah, and I just want to say uh, I'm I'm glad that you pointed out that Jay gave a lot of comedians uh, a, a chance on the show, and you gave specific examples. Chelsea Handler was one of them that you cited. Um, Jay well, was Adam never Carolla, really, given- really. Jay helped when Adam Carolla lost his radio show by uh, Claire Channel screwed that up. Jimmy Norton, who's an amazing talent, was on the show repeatedly uh, for those uh, uh, those segments. He had him on doing all kinds of things and covering. Uh, Emmys and MTV awards, and uh, I mean, there were so many great aspects and people that Jay helped. And uh... well, we we went out of our way to seek out uh, comedians. We actually hired two managers, uh, Ross Mark and Bob Reed. These guys were managers of comedians. And we specifically hired them to seek out new talent to come on the show. The reason I point that out is because there were uh, there were many um, observers, television pundits, and critics who seemed to think that Jay was somehow threatened by comedians and didn't want to have them on the show. Where in in, in fact the exact opposite was true. No, that, that's right. Too. I, I love, too, reading some of the, the little liner notes, too, that there were always two shows going on during this night show, the one on stage that uh, the viewing public saw and the one behind it where the camera didn't roll. So this book has all of it. And I don't want to, you know, I'm just going to say Helen Kushner, etc. For those of you TV files uh, that really want the straight scoop and want everything, and, of course, for everybody, all of us who miss Jay Leno, on air, and uh, and hopefully he realizes that, and hopefully he realizes what a legacy, you know, this, I don't think, he, he's not going to be touched, because cable is still siphoning away viewers, I don't think anybody's going to be getting the ratings that Jay did, and consistently for all of those 22 plus years, etc. Are there any websites that we should send people, any charities, anything else, other than having everybody buy the book, it's available everywhere, Behind the Curtain by Dave Berg, B-E-R-G, but let me let you plug away if you've got any appearances, book signings, uh, charitable events you'd like to plug, whatever. Well, you are very, very kind, but, uh, but uh, you know, my, my book signings and charitable events, uh, in fact, I do have uh, uh, a charitable event coming up in Columbus, Ohio, for the Columbus uh, Symphony, but most of these, of course, are local events, so... Uh, but I do appreciate it, and, and you can you can get the book at Amazon.com as well as your local bookstore. And what's next for you? You do so many things and always have well before The Tonight Show on down. But uh, what are you doing now besides perhaps taking some time to breathe? Well, I'm essentially, you know, in the middle of promoting the book, of course. And I think, Mike, I kind of want to be like you and have a regular column. I, I like you, uh, write a lot of opinion pieces. And um, I'm, you know, working out an arrangement where I'd have a regular column on a weekly basis. I'd just be happy with that. Well, it's hard to contain you because you have, you know, the politics is just one aspect of uh, 
Dave Berg. Just an amazing book. And uh, don't wait till the holidays. Get this now because this is the book if you're still celebrating summer and you want something entertaining, if you love television, and who doesn't, Behind the Curtain by Dave Berg, an insider's view of Jay Leno's Tonight Show. And please tell Jay how much he's loved and missed. I don't think, I mean, you just have to start with his wife. She knows what's going on, and she knows how much all of us miss Jay and wish he were still right there where he belongs at uh, 11.30, 11.35, or 11.34. What a smart move, moving him a little bit, a minute before the competition, before Kimmel and Letterman. That was brilliance, as was most everything on The uh, Tonight Show with Jay Leno. And uh, we just miss him, and, and this book, really is, is sort of a crutch to to help us out behind the curtain by Dave Berg. With that, we're going to take a short time out and come right back, hopefully with Evan Ginsberg in New York City and many more guests here on Legends Radio. All right, Evan Ginsberg back with Legends Radio. And uh, coming up at 9 o'clock, we have Nikita Brezhnikov, former manager of Nikolai Volkov, currently an actor in a, a great new film called Brush with Danger. And before we get into all of that, we just want to remind everybody that the opinions, the comments of anyone else on the show, not necessarily shared or endorsed by yours truly. And folks, you should check out Legends TV. That's legendstvnyc.com, where we have tons of comedians and wrestlers. And if uh, you've been enjoying. Just that on this radio show, you'll certainly enjoy it at legendstvnyc.com where we have hundreds of hours of archives. And uh, I'm exaggerating just a bit. Probably uh, 60 or 70 shows uh, are up there at 60 to 90 minutes a pop. So, uh, And we recently had on Pitbull Gary Wolf, ECW Pitbull Gary Wolf. And speaking of ECW, uh, Jason Knight put up a scathing, scathing uh, commentary on uh, WWE.com about how um, they have all this footage, all this footage of ECW and they're not seeing a penny of it. And the sacrifices that these guys made over the years, you know, financial, physically, a lot of those guys are even gone at this point. So uh, check out Jason Knight's facebook page folks and also check out on friday september 19 one night only at penelope's venue that's one two two one nine dix toledo southgate um in detroit this is battles bouts and brawls as well as the chic wrestling's greatest villain and the website is www.insent.net. Mark Nowatowski, who uh, spent a few days with me, great guy. And uh, you could hear him talking about this event on the uh, most recent Legends TV. So uh, once again, it's Battles, Bouts, and Brawls and the Sheik, Wrestling's Greatest Villain. And uh, support independent film folks. And for those who criticize it, all I could say is do better. Put your money where your mouth is and do better yourself because I know what's involved in doing documentaries. Thousands upon thousands of hours of editing. Generally, you don't make your money back or if you're lucky, you break even. And it's from the heart. It's a, these are passion projects. The Michael uh, Moore's... Uh, and the Moreland Spurlocks are few and far between, so it's easy to criticize. It's not quite as easy to do it on your own. So uh, anyway, uh, with that off my chest, my movie, by the way, that I produced is called Teresa Sario Alive Again, about wounded warriors and uh, <laughs> uh, the devastating effect of war. Devastating, devastating on these soldiers and uh, their families. And very proud of the film. And uh, ah, that's uh, getting all of that off my chest. Well, you I should be of uh, the wrestler as well because there is hardly a week that goes by when I don't hear a lot of people reference that movie, greatest wrestling movie of all time, which really encompasses a lot. And just references how true to life that was for those soldiers, you know, once they're out of the limelight and they're 
maybe past their prime, you know, working, sharing indie space with these young, hot uh, talents. That was, I think, uh, Kleinrock's thing that's this weekend. He's got Papa Don on it and a wealth of uh, talent, you know, Chikara, Dragon Gate USA, uh, CZW, and, uh, you know, that's, that's got to be uh, rough. <laughs> uh, as associate producer on The Wrestler, I'm very proud of it. One of the great experiences of my life. And once again, none of us, none of us got rich from it. But a hundred years from now, people will be watching that film and it, it, that means a lot to me. And uh, recently I had an argument with a uh, wrestling website uh, guru who shall rename who shall remain nameless and uh, it got very ugly and uh, you know to me you know reviewing Monday Night Raw or, or Smackdown does not make you uh, <laughs> does not make you Arthur Miller or Tennessee Williams or Ernest Hemingway you know you're uh, you're summarizing something that isn't all that wonderful generally to begin with for an obsessive audience it, it is not great art and what and I'm not saying this to be petty uh, publicly he was very critical of, you know, what we do, you know, because <laughs> it's not quote unquote commercial enough for his taste. And, uh, it, it, you know, to me, you put your heart and soul and you create art. You create art. It's not always about uh, tapping into uh, the lowest common denominator and, uh, you know, do you love John Cena? Do you hate John Cena? That's not art. That's uh, he, was, he was criticizing the, the wrestler movie. Which no, 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 no. He was okay, not criticizing. Something else because there's he was no not criticizing the wrestler. He was criticizing me personally because he's made a lot more money in the wrestling business. So but that's, that's uh, meaningless. That's not the, that means nothing. <laughs> There, there are guys who sold out arenas who did not make a lot of money in the wrestling business. If you judge success on paychecks, it's a twisted, twisted way of looking at things. And uh, there are guys who sold out arenas in the 70s and even in the 80s who never broke 100000 Never broke 100000 There are guys on WWE TV right now who... Lower on the card, okay, lower on the card. This is prime time hit TV shows on <laughs> cable TV, 8 o'clock, 9 o'clock, 10 o'clock at night, who are not earning what a New York City, uh, Long Island-based school teacher at the top of the pay scale is making, okay? Quote, unquote, superstars who are not earning 140000 or so a year, like a Long Island teacher at the top of the pay scale. Okay, so, you know, if you're judging success on a paycheck, wrestling is not the place to do that. It really isn't. It really isn't. Well, look at Kamala is, you know, that guy's doing that, uh, is it the book on uh, his life to help out because he's not getting any financial assistance from the company. He was a main eventer. And he made a event in the 70s, 80s, even the early 90s. Well, 90s. Kamala told me face to face what he made, you know, headlining against Hogan in sold out arenas. And, and you couldn't even imagine. You couldn't even imagine. Okay. And, uh, you know, it's a ruthless business. It really is. And uh, so I really, when, when I hear a schlockmeister who, uh, you know, reviews Roar and SmackDown, comment on, you know, Evan, you are not a success. It depends what you, it depends, and that's exactly what he said, which, uh, you know, all I could say is, you know, I think art survives, and I think, uh, <laughs> I think a lot of other things disappears in the, uh, you know, toilet bowl of time, and uh, we'll, <laughs> we'll, we'll see a hundred years from now whose work is, is, is still out there, and uh, I'll leave it at that, because uh, you know, there's enough feuding in, in wrestling without too well, many. Well, look at the TV show. You just said, how many shows have you done at 60 to 90 plus minutes of pop? You've done 60 TV shows or something like that 
pretty much every week. Um, we missed one week.